Welcome to Market Buzz. I'm Greg Schnell, the Canadian technician and host of the Market Buzz. Each show we do a deep dive into different industries using weekly charts to see what is happening on a long timeline. Please follow me on Twitter at Schnell Investor and you can also find my blogs on gregschnell.com as well as stockcharts.com. So we've got a market trying to uh, rally back today. A little bit of a tough start to the day. Uh, markets opening down hard and then rallying throughout the day uh, to bring us back up. So we're going to talk a little bit about the indexes. And then uh, the NASDAQ 100 has been underperforming lately and then we're going to go through all the, the big large cap guys, Microsoft and all those. Microsoft, Apple, Tesla, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, uh, Google. So anyway, we're going to go through those and just look at those. And then we're going to compare the old economy and the hot economy. And uh, that'll probably run us out of time. But um, I think there's lots of um, undertones that uh, we should be looking for, or at least understanding where they're going. And uh, hopefully that'll give us a little bit more insight into what we can expect. And if you'd like more of this type of commentary, you can always go check out my website. Um, there's subscriptions over there if that interests you at all. So, um, again, the markets fell hard to start, spent most of the day rising, and then right towards the end, just a little tail off, but I think we'd all agree, that's a pretty good run back from where they were, 12.8 to 13.2. Stocks like Tesla were off $100 today, so that makes for a hard start, and um, really a big, big move back up. So, we have... Um, a bearish reversal out of this uh, pattern here. So when it broke below this O, oh, this is a sell signal. Well, now we actually broke down and we're trying to find support in this layer. And what you can see is we had an O here and we had a couple of O's here. And so in general, this is kind of a big broad support area that we'd want to see hold. You can see that a bear market would start when we kind of crash through this 11.2 layer. We're nowhere near that. Um, but just in terms of a corrective basis, where are we? So I'm going to just take this back to gallery view. And uh, what we see on the NASDAQ, so we were going along, then we spent the whole week going sideways. We finished on Friday with a thrust, opened uh, the Monday last week with a thrust, and then bent, gently cruised down, opened lower on Monday, opened lower on Tuesday, and now spent Tuesday trying to rally up. We do have a couple of headwinds ahead of us. One is this 100-period moving average um, at 13,450 that I want to cover off and a few other things. I know there were some big dip buyers uh, with a, with the big sale in, in some of those large cap names. So we're going to cover that off. Here's the 50 day moving average for the NASDAQ and you can see we snapped below it and there was a whole bunch of buyers that stepped in. Now we closed just below the prior low. Obviously we traveled a lot, but what you'll notice is on all these declining days, the volumes is starting to advance. I don't know if that was grammatically right. The volume is starting to advance on each of these declining days. So we want to be aware that um, some selling is starting to show up in the market. Now, six days in a row, who'd be surprised if we had an up day? Um, and then the real question would be, how do we kind of end the week? We did have options expiration on Friday, and that can make a big difference. But right now, again, we're trading down here below the 10-week moving average. It's been support for most of the run, uh, brief dip in September and October. And both of those were met with buying the the week, either that week or the following week. So um, an interesting place for us to just keep watching. Looking back at the top, let's go to the S&P 500. And what you see here is a little bit better. We're trying to get through the 100 period moving average, um, holding up. You can see a lot of uh, volume showing up at the end of the day here, uh, either closing uh, positions that rallied all day or... Um, being optimistic and expecting us to break through this downtrend and move on to new highs again. So the S&P 500 bounced right off the 50-day, unlike the NASDAQ. And, uh, you know, the volume had been picking up here. Now the S&P closed, whatever, 0.13, up 0.13. So it was a positive day, but really I think we'd just say it was a, a day where a lot of down pressure and then we we close flat. So there were some big dip buyers at the end. And again, a lot of those large cap names have been weak for a while. I'm going to show you those charts right away here. But the question is, what's going on? So why are the large cap tech names weak and what is replacing that the, the index continues to go higher? 
So there's a couple of ways we can look at that. I think the one thing that I would focus on is if we just go back to the S&P and say, you know, what's been doing well over the last three months? Uh, so if we think that the market bottomed in the 1st of November and then rallied out of that hole, um, we're at the end of February. So three months back would put us to late November uh, or a little bit towards um, December 1st. But when we look at the name, you'll notice that it's very few of the big names that uh, we've been talking about lately. So this is set for three months. And what you see here, um, I, I haven't sorted it on the scooter ranking, but it's pretty close. Um, it's amazing how many of these names um, have, have been uh, really, really strong. But when we look, you know, um, Apple... Google, Facebook, all of those names are not in this list. And a lot of the other names that are showing up now um, are quite different. And when we go look at Discovery, I mean, that's been a moonshot since late November. And then Viacom, um, you know, 30 to 70, um, unbelievable gain. So really, really nice. Uh, Marathon Oil, uh, all the oil stocks started to rally on that November 9th. And... Um, and from there, $4 to $11. I mean, it's been an, a beautiful run, 200%. Kohl's, a retailer, same thing. Early November starts to kick it up from 20 to 55. You can get by on that kind of return. And then Freeport McMoran, the copper space has been lit. Um, they are just uh, rolling, rolling, rolling. And I actually think some of the things that we're starting to see... Um, is that copper is getting so expensive that it's actually putting pressure on the business plans of the renewable energy. That's a theme I'm just starting to, to enroll in. And, and we have some reasons for doing that. And maybe I'll just show you one of those. So if we just went and we took the uh, fan ETF, which is for uh, wind energy, you can see this chart was in a very nice uptrend. And it's starting to break down. But the scooter ranking is broken below 75 after it had been sitting up there since June, um, it's been really strong. This uptrend in relative strength is starting to break. So anytime what was outperforming starts to underperform, I get more leery. And what you can see clearly is this, as an example, the CTF is really um, starting to break down. And the PPO, well, it's sitting right at zero. If it was to start to turn up here, that would be fine. If it's going to continue and go negative, when, when you have something quite frankly, that's been positive for almost two full years with the exception of the COVID dip, and now all of a sudden wants to go down there on its own, I think that's a much bigger deal. And one of the reasons for that, I think, is the price of copper. Now here's TAN, the uh, solar ETF, and you can see that it's breaking down out of its pattern here. The scooter ranking in black is still okay, but the purple uh, area chart that recognizes the relative strength compared to the S&P 500. And just for those that don't know, I'll explain what that is again. So when you're trying to figure out what's outperforming, you say, how fast has something moved up? And usually if something moved up 1%, and in this case, what we're comparing to is the S&P 500. Um, if the S&P 500 moved up 1% and TAN moved up 1.1, then it's outperforming on each given day. Well, what happens is when we book that back to back and draw this out, in this case, a two-year chart, what we can see is that um, TAN has been outperforming really for the whole time. I mean, it had a brief dip in November of 2019, um, rallied back up, started to get going again. And then as the market broke down in late February, March, all of a sudden um, the TAN ETF started to underperform, went back up and became a top performing ETF all the way through till now. It's still up above 90, but I do find that the sell signal on the, uh, using the the scooter ranking for a sell signal isn't usually the best course of action. I will say if you drew a trend line under here, it's pretty obvious that it's broken. And one of the things we've seen so much focus on this green energy, um, ESG, uh, renewables, all that kind of investing style. To see it break down here, we have to be very cautious about watching for that sort of um, trend break. And in this particular case, if I was to just snap a line, you know, we'd probably go something like that. And then if I was to snap a line on relative strength, I'd go something like that. And we're just breaking through it here. I don't know if you can see it, but it's showing 
right about here, um, just below this blue line. And the blue line is actually for my scooter ranking. I put a 75% to just notice when my scooter is above the top, uh, in the top 25% or what I like to call the top quartile. So I've put them both on the same um, indicator just to give me a little, ver little more vertical chart uh, room. And so otherwise everything would be a little flatter. But you can also see that this volume at 5 million was the biggest down day in a couple of years. I think that's kind of critical. And really we topped out on this big volume thrust around the first of the year. We had one stab a little bit higher, but quite frankly, we lost our momentum on that big, huge volume surge at the beginning of the year and haven't done anything really since. And then lately it's been letting go. Now we've seen some other names let go lately. I think we're all aware um, the, the news media has been buzzing with um, discussions about SPAC and discussions about Tesla and all that kind of thing. So when we're looking at the market, what we want to be aware of is what's the rotation. And again, I think one of the, the easy things to do, again, going back to three months, only Twitter is really in the top tech group. Um, a lot of these other names, um, you know, this is an oil company, an oil company, Oxy. Occidental Petroleum, Marathon Oil, um, lots of these oil names have moved up and basically they started moving up in early November and have continued to do so. Apache, here's Macy's, a retailer, and you know, it's a bit of a surprise to see a retailer, but that chart's looking really nice from 6 to 16. That's pretty good returns in three months. And the airlines have been doing good. I've been talking on Market Buzz about some of the back to, um, back to normal trade. Uh, the the repopulating of American business, getting people um, going to work and getting people able to go out and, and participate in the economy, that's a big shift. Now, again, MGM Resorts, I mean, that really just broke out at the beginning of February here, and it was at $30 and then took off to the races um, at $40 now, and that's probably got lots of room to run. Uh, Western Digital, there's one tech name um, on this list. Now here's Devon Energy. So again, you're starting to see the oil names come to the top. And I think, uh, you know, is it how far can they go? And everybody thinks the move is already done. Um, I think I've been pretty clear on my thoughts on that. But I saw today that Morgan Stanley had put out a note with oil going to 100 and Goldman Sachs had a note with oil going to 80. I saw that on Twitter. Um, so I would have to go back and just check directly from those guys. But just a, a quick brief um, glance at that suggests if, if oil's only at 62 and it's going to 80 or 100, um, there's considerable upside in these oil stocks. And one of the reasons, I think, is because the large oil cap companies aren't getting back into the drilling business. They're all talking about renewables. And here's Exxon Mobil breaking out of the, the prior June highs just now. I mean, this stock is just starting to get going. So when we see that, um, you know, it's just breaking through here now. $65 was where it closed at the end of uh, 2019. It's got another $10 to get up to there. And you can see that it traded under 75. I think we'll have a lot of uh, friction work to get through to get it through 75. But uh, again, I, I don't have any trouble seeing oil getting up into that 80 and 100. And um, uh, I just, I think we need the energy actually. I think, I think the um, the big picture is if we're going to push everybody to electric, we're going to find some real um, congestion over there. So when we look at uh, bouncing around here a little bit, this electric energy, here's the price of copper. Now that chart shows something, but the chart I want you to see is this chart. This is the price of copper going back to 2006. And what we see is the average basically from 2014 to 2020, um, all in there, you could pick an average, call it 280 or 270, somewhere uh, down in the middle of this area. We're at $4. So we're well up here. We're, uh, you know, a dollar 40 above 280. Let's just call it, that's 50% higher than the average of the last five years or six years. That's meaningful. But more importantly, this was the final high in copper ever at 458 we're at 420 
if copper is going to break out to new all-time highs, I continue to expect pressure on this um, greening trade, the, the green energy trade. And the reason is because you'll see companies like First Solar, let's just go there, First Solar, um, you know, rolling over quite significantly. This is a, a year-long chart. Let's just go back to my weekly you can see this uptrend is well defined and all of a sudden it's breaking down. It touched its 200 day moving average today for the first time since July. And, you know, solar has been one of the bigger winners here in this whole green trade. That was the, the TAN ETF I showed earlier. But when you're seeing these names rolling down and they're rolling down hard and there's no, you know, the volume's meaningfully under its average volume. So I'm seeing some big trades like that. And then when we go into the... Um, electric vehicle space. One of the things to talk about here is this is set up for one month. And what do you notice on here? What I notice is there's not very many of these electric vehicles that are positive over the last month. And, you know, a few are up, whatever, 9, 10%. And then we have Churchill Capital, which of course came, uh, was bringing Lucid Motors public. And that chart underwent a little bit of a wrench today, um, falling from $65 to $35. So uh, almost a cut in half uh, just to get going. And apparently people weren't impressed with the deal that they had struck um, in terms of dilution. And then we've got WorkSport, which is solar power um, for pickup trucks. And it just, this is different than WorkHorse. Um, and it's a solar power panel that goes across the back of your pickup truck. And this is a 50 cent item, but this is an example of, they were also going to come out with an electric vehicle. I don't know if that's going to happen here, but when I look through, you know, here was workhorse and this one, uh, you know, falling meaningfully, uh, today it's broken any sort of uptrend we had going here. And when we look through this um, hot economy, I'll call it the, all of the um, electric vehicles and the greening of the economy, uh, these are just the electric vehicle charts. But what do you see here? I see, you know, a high in early January, and these are breaking down to new um, one-month lows. At least there was a buyer showing up at the end of today to try and lift this chart back up. But when we go through these, you know, $10 was the high, $11. We're down here at six, um, kind of a, a big pullback from a recent breakout two weeks ago. And then BMW just drifting a little bit lower, trapped under its 10 week moving average. Uh, BYD company, uh, a big manufacturer of Chinese uh, mobility products. And we've broken through the 10 week moving average for the first time going back to March. So, well, I guess it was back here in May. Um, but you're looking at this big trend um, and all of a sudden it cracking and you're seeing the relative strength trend breaking. So be very careful entering back into these names until they start to build a base because all of their relative strength trends against the S&P 500 are starting to break meaningfully. And those can be pretty expensive lessons to learn when they under when they were outperforming the S&P and start to underperform. That's when people are start to hit the sell button. So if the S&P was pulling back 1% and they were pulling back 0.9, it wouldn't be a concern. Well, the S&P was flat on the day and the stock was down 15%. So you get the idea of how underperforming it is and when you start to see that um, that can matter quite a bit so here's Daimler um, the the Mercedes product line and it's still holding up nicely above its 10-week moving average and when you compare that you'll see Tesla breaking down a lot of people are very strong on Tesla I'm just saying there's a lot of competition coming this year and uh, a lot of the German manufacturers, American manufacturers, Chinese manufacturers, Korean, uh, they're all coming at it. And um, so it's going to be really important for Tesla to try and hold on. But I would um, just be aware of all the competition they're starting to face. So here's the chart of Ford. And you, you can see Ford and Daimler aren't breaking down here. Whereas Tesla has rolled over meaningfully. It was 900, it was 620 this morning. Um, so that's a 30% sale on Tesla. Um, albeit it rallied $100 during the day today or pretty close to it. Uh, Fiat Chrysler, um, so holding above the 10 week again, uh, this is now called Stellantis. Um, 
STLA instead of TSLA for Tesla, uh, but very close. Anyway, it's been horizontal here for two, three months now, um, just kind of consolidating in around $16. And then when we look at FUV, um, our Komodo, you can see the relative strength uptrend is breaking here. To me, that's a real sell clue. So if I was to just click on this chart, I don't like it when these things that were outperforming stop outperforming. And, uh, you know, you can draw a trend line. This is a four month trend line. That's a pretty good place to look. Uh, but when it started to break and you can see the same thing back here, obviously it would have been more in scale if we didn't have this big bump on the end, but it was outperforming. It started to underperform and that was a good place to just kind of check out. Now we see this exceptional volume and then we um, you know, even in here with 15 million shares a day, that's a lot of volume. But when I draw my trend line on my PPO, this thing's very close to leaving the party. And to me, when your momentum trend is breaking, your relative strength trend is breaking, you were holding above the 10 week moving average for most of the move and you're starting to break it. I don't know how many more caution signals I would want to get, but um, this is just about the flagman in the middle of the road saying, you know, caution straight directly ahead. Geely Holding Group, same thing, leading Chinese auto manufacturer, falling below the 10 week for the first time, breaking the relative strength trend. You see this on a lot of these charts right now. Um, GM is still holding up. So if I wanted to do that same uh, relative strength trend line, right, I'm going to draw it under here and I'm just going to go like that. It's still holding as long as it doesn't start to break down into a new relative strength low and you can just either take this one here or you could take a longer time frame, say this one here, and when it starts to break down, what do you want to do? To me, I think that's a pretty good case for, you know, you're probably not going to make a lot more money when it starts to underperform the S&P 500. And why is that? Because people just go buy the S&P 500 instead. And um, so the stock starts to suffer. When your relative strength is underperforming, that, that can be a problem. So, um, the point I want to make is it, until you kind of compare all the charts side by side, it's not that easy to see. But my point is a lot of these relative strength trend lines on the new fashion mobiles, um, driverless cars, look at this thing just uh, collapse here down 13% over a couple of weeks. Uh, Green Power Motor Company, this one's been working nicely, fell below the 10 week for the first time since November. Um, bit of a big deal. Uh, Honda Motor Company, this one's just chopping sideways. It never really did get broken out. You can see relative strength is um, waning in a big way. Harley Davidson got back up to prior highs and literally topped out and rolled back down below its 10 week, trying to hold above its 20 week. PPO trend line is broken. For me, this is a clue that these hot areas of the market are starting to get pretty weak. Hylon Holdings uh, breaking down uh, you know, huge volume spike and the stock didn't really go anywhere. So that's probably a bigger caution. Here's Candy Technologies, the uptrend very close to breaking here in price. The relative strength uptrend is already broken and the PPO uptrend is broken. So um, again, another problem there. Here's Chinese EV starting to break down. I think this is just an area to be extremely cautious. And again, we're just talking about the cars. There's a whole other industry group around this, the autonomous driving, the um, laser navigation systems, the, um, the power build out uh, for the grid infrastructure, all that kind of stuff. There's lots of different ways to play this green move. But the big thing to think about is if all of a sudden copper is going to the moon up 50%, again, 50% above the average of the last six years, all of those plans that were put in place six months ago are now totally out of perspective because their cost, not only for the solar panel, the copper in and around the solar array, but you also have the whole transmission line to get it over to the grid. All of that power pricing, all of that stuff has gone up. Now steel, I read it on, I just read a, a brief note this morning. Steel, cold roll and hot rolled steel, all very expensive, hard to even get. And uh, the single biggest thing in a solar array is the steel structural network holding up the panels. In the windmills, it's the big tower that goes up into the sky. That's usually steel. 
or aluminum. So you've got these big, um, heavy raw material costs for those finished goods. And those costs are soaring. So all of these models for pricing on this green energy um, are impaired. And uh, a car with electric only has six times more copper than a regular car. So when you take one of their main components and you just push that cost structure up 50% um, over anything they've seen in the last or the, over the average of the last six years, that's huge. So the point I want to make is be very careful in all of this and just um, be careful on buying the dip. I saw somebody buying our Komodo uh, dip the other day and I couldn't help but thinking, you know, uh, you want to broaden your scope and check and make sure you're, you're watching all of these charts. So here's NEO. This thing's been behaving very, very well, staying above the 10-week all the way up. Is this a dip you want to buy? Not when all the other charts are breaking in relative strength, in PPO. Um, there's just so many things that are changing here that I would be very, very cautious. So in this case, your PPO is is still at a very high level, but making lower highs and lower lows. That's probably not a look we like. And you can see in this case, it dipped below the 10 week before, but everything else was still going. So it was kind of okay to maybe buy the dip. Well, now you see the exact opposite where everything else is changing and you want to be really, really careful. Okay. So here's Nicola and you know, they've, they're trying to build, um, highway tractor trucks and, uh, electric pickup and we've got lots of of reasons to look at these names but at this point that looks to me like lower highs and lower lows and until that changes we'll let somebody else build the base here's nissan um, chopping around around 11 dollars put in a high two weeks ago and then couldn't hold it and literally giving it all back ppo trend line is still in track intact so what you see is these old car manufacturers are still holding up okay but the new car manufacturers are, are struggling here's ferrari trying to hold the 40-week moving average um, that looks pretty weak to me and again they're not really going to have electric hybrids or electric cars until 2025 so that might be a struggle for them ride had been trying to break through this 30 dollar level briefly shot up here to 31 couldn't quite take out the prior high and now it's at 19 like that's a move um 30 percent in a couple of days uh solo this one's broken down relatively hard from ten dollars call it to six and a half i like this name i was in it for this little period in here stock wasn't performing i sold it um spartan energy acquisition corp here we are with you know kind of a triple top and the fisker car name so all of these charts hopefully you get the picture that i'm getting um, which is that their relative strength trends are breaking their ppo trends are breaking and their price trends are starting to break the first sign is before um as it breaks the 10-week the moving average and you wonder, should I buy the dip? Well, in this case, the reason to not buy the dip this time is the fact that all these indicators are breaking on all of these charts as a group. And when we looked at them just in a summary page, we can see that over the one-month performance, nothing is working. And when we roll it out to three months, it's not much better. There's only, f I mean, these four are crazy good. Um, but the rest of them, I guess I'd be happy with 30% in Tesla still. But you're, when you look at this, it's that kind of change where all of a sudden we've got all of these reds. Like this is down 50%. It doesn't sound like much till it's in your count. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying that the whole car sector here is looking a lot more fragile. So uh, be careful investing with that. Um, briefly again, Tesla, it's broken its relative strength uptrend. I thought this was going to be its low. It made another 70% run after that. But to me, I'd be very careful on Tesla here. Parabolic move. We've got our second PPO sell signal. Um, there's not a lot that I like about the chart. Thanks for taking the time to join me on Market Buzz. Market Buzz airs Wednesdays at 10.30 a.m. Eastern. You can also see the recordings on Stock Charts TV YouTube page. Thanks for taking the time. Bye-bye. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.